So speaking of virtual reality or VR, as you may call it, it's interesting to note that this sector has been around for quite a while now. Specifically speaking, it's been around since 2016, which of course marks the year of virtual realities world over. Today on SME Hub, we will be talking to a few entrepreneurs in Nigeria who have not only made this sector an entertaining place for fund seekers, but of course, a lucrative enterprise for investors. I have with me Faith Odeasi, the Chief Operating Officer of Emasia Virtual Reality Studio. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. All right, so looking at it from a layman's point of view, coming here could just be maybe I want to come play video games. But what exactly is the entertaining value it brings, first of all? And what exactly is virtual reality? All right, okay. Um, virtual reality is not just video games, you know. Virtual reality is, of course, one of the latest technology around the world today. And what it does to the user is that it creates an entirely you know different environment from your current environment so it simulates you know there are so many kinds of environments that you can be immersed in in virtual right. reality so you could for example in the streets of lagos you, you know you could actually take a walk in virtual reality on the streets of new york and it feels like you're actually there really <laughs> yes you can you know you could actually go to interesting places of course that have been captured in virtual reality and it, it actually immerses you into that world and it feels like you're there so virtual reality is not just video games right you are very much more um involved it's, it's a first person reality experience where you're actually involved you can almost touch things feel and of course it feels like you're there it's it's real it's almost real <laughs> Okay. Right. Now, um, speak to us about um, the experience of the business from the point of, you know, an investor or a business owner. How long have you been in this business, first of all? So we've been in business for about five years now, because we kicked off in 2017. So, and it's been a very profitable venture, you know, because we, we've grown from a very... Um, small because we started on a very very small scale i was, I was about going there because i <laughs> we, know you had your start somewhere yeah, what accept, was the acceptance like what was the acceptance like okay so you know like i said we started in 2017 that was like a year after the um the introduction of virtual reality basically so it was at first people wanted to try out oh this is new let's check we've not done this before oh so what uh, initially we didn't start out like um, people weren't paying for it. Oh, really? Yes, we just because we had a we had a business we were running at that time. What so business was it? We had a, we have a gadget store. Okay. So because we're a tech company anyway, so we okay. maintained our tech. Okay. So we had a gadget store, and we just wanted something like a side attraction. Okay. For people, you know, and we were retailing as well. We're retailing virtual reality equipment but you know people before they buy would want to you know try out what they wanted so it was more like a side attraction so and we deliberately try use the scary content so that you know people could freak out and everybody was like what's going on there can i want to try this out what's happening and of course it was the latest technology so the acceptance was was good of course it was new people wanted to try out new things right and it was good it was actually very good and of course, like I said, we didn't start off charging people for it. We just, okay, come, it's free. Why don't you try it and I see what, what it's like. And of course, over time, we saw that, you know, people loved the experience or they always wanted to try something. I'm like, oh, can I see something else? Oh, can I? And of course, we decided to, you know, from there, make a business wow, out of it. that's a nice idea. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking that could be another catch for me if I want to go into some kind of business. You know, okay. Because obviously, like people say, it's not all about money, 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 money. Yeah. If you put it out there that it's all about money, you might just kill a lot of people. But I like that idea where you say, why not come try it out and see for yourself? Thank Perhaps you. after trying one or two attempts, you might now want to say, okay, how I'm, I'm Yes, moved. definitely. I, I like that. We were able to even sell. Like I told you, we were retailing the, the garden Then it was store. the Oculus Go. Okay. So we're retailing it, so it was easier to sell it when people experienced it than they wanted to buy. Okay, so 
Now, how much on an average did it cost you to put all of this in place when you first started? Okay. <laughs> well, on an average. On an average, actually, like I said earlier, we actually started very small. How so small? we started with just one, just one Oculus Go. And at the time, I think it was about 120,000 Naira at that time. So that's what we started with, actually, just one Oculus Go. Of course, it was stock to be sold, but we decided to like, okay, why don't we just try to make a business out of it? So we took one of our stock and we... <laughs> So that was how much it actually cost us to start. Okay. And now, eventually we've grown, you know, we've opened up stores, we've, we've done a lot of things actually, but you know, but initial startup capital was about 120,000. Okay, so <laughs> 120,000 as of when you started. Yes. Now looking at how far you've come, because mm. I'm looking at the point where entrepreneurs think of scaling up their business, because mm. starting up can be very challenging, especially with looking at your trading capital, what you're going to invest into that business. You've gone past that particular phase. Yes. Now, I'm sure the phase you are in is about maybe trying to still invest into the business and trying to maintain the business to stay afloat. Mm, well, I'm not sure that we're... Does that apply we to you? Now. Well, I think where we are current, because currently now we're one of the largest VR equipment um, rental store in, really? in Lagos. Yeah, we have like a large um, base of virtual reality equipment. Wow. So yes. So what was it so, like for you? What was the challenge like for you trying to scale up at some point? Okay. Yeah. So of because course. Because you no longer had just one. one you had yeah. several. So we had to, <laughs> yeah. you know, we had to like, because of the acceptance, okay. it was green. So we bought, we bought an extra one and another one. That was all we were using, and of course, because of the acceptance and the turnover, well, how fast we were able to make <laughs> yeah. the money back. So we decided to, you know, um, expand. And of course, we have a very creative chief operating officer. That our CEO is, is the, I say, is the creative behind the Marshall Virtual Of course, with his tech, because he has a background in tech, and the the, the research carried out some research and. Yeah, we had to now buy racing simulators, you know, to to create an an entirely different experience. Racing you know, what? Racing simulators. They are called virtual reality racing simulators. And in terms of financing, we had to bootstrap. Okay, we kind of bootstrapped all the way, all the way until maybe when we now needed to like expand. I think that was last year when we decided to you know look at um, debt financing options, but. From the initial stage, we bootstrapped all the way. So we just took back the money that we made and invested it back in the business. Okay, so looking that. at it, you know, in a space of time, yeah. how much did it take you to scale up to that level where you are right now? Well, I'll say on, okay. On an average. On too. an average between uh, 60 to 100 million. Yeah. That's quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now let's go a little further into, you know, the business activity that you do here. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges, you know, that you face or you're faced with in this sector? Or personally, what were some of the challenges that you faced while, you know, okay. moving on in the business? Okay. Like, firstly, I said financing, of course, one. Then secondly, of course, because it's, you know, um, virtual reality is a nascent technology, and because of its nascent, we had to, you know, tend towards entertainment. Although we have tried, we've done application development, we've done education, virtual reality, where, where we went to schools, worked with schools. What was the experience? What was the reception like? Oh, so because, you know, <laughs> it was new, so a lot of schools didn't embrace us as much, and of course, we got feedback very good um, reception from some other schools so like we were able to for example we have we had um, content where you could actually teach biology with virtual reality and really yes yeah, so you could you could travel for example as opposed to just drawing pictures and um, showing students videos visuals you know they could actually get immersed in the human body 
and you could see the heart and almost touch it. <laughs> yeah, so like we we did all that. Even the solar system, you could travel to Venus and go to Mars, see what it looks like, and all all that. So we 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 tried a lot of things, of course. But entertainment for us was the part that was people quickly embraced. So I'll say the challenges that we faced in that regard was that, you know, and of course the current the current thing because entertainment the entertainment sector has its seasons so on some periods you have so oh, there's a peak period actually actually during the festive periods and during holidays and of course you will, there will be an increase in revenue so what do you point. do when these periods you know have elapsed when to stay in business, business. Thank yeah. you. so what we do is of course first of all we we have an active uh, social media campaign running we also have the website so what we do is we we try to reduce our prices you know put packages together also we we also do rentals so as opposed to people coming you know, a lot of people are maybe at their work uh, at home busy with other things so we we also do a rental service where How we can do you mean rental? so we can actually bring our experience to you wherever you are or like you take some of this equipment to yes. the homes of people yes to the homes schools workplaces events so we at what cost does it come to the customer uh, of course especially when you have to bring such yes yeah, so you know, our parents are very affordable actually we try to make it as affordable as possible mm -hmm.